Welcome everybody um, to our little Bible study and let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that we are accepted in your beloved Son. We give you all the glory and honor and we thank you for the privilege of studying your King James Bible rightly divided. We're so blessed to have come to this great understanding of how you uh, divide the Bible, Lord. And we're thankful that um, we have a perfect Bible. We pray that you would give us spiritual understanding and enlightenment to understand your word today. And that you would bless all who join us in the Bible study and, and ourselves too um, in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today we are going to be studying 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And our goal today is to not only understand the problem of wrong living, but also to understand how to prevent it and how to pull out our own possibility for wrong living by the root. Mm. So we're going to um, get to the bottom of wrong living today. So um, let's... Um, so it's, this uh, chapter is about wrong living, immorality rebuked. Uh, verses uh, 1 through 13, so it's a sh short chapter, is about judging a member living in open sin, the sin of fornication. And if we put the chapters in one sentence um, that have come before this chapter, we can say in chapter 1, they are saints because Christ is the power of God. Um, two, chapter 2, not man's wisdom, but the wisdom of God in a mystery. Chapter 3, laborers together with God get uh, receive rewards. And chapter 4, which we did last week, spanking the saints for not following Paul, who said, follow me and my ways which be in Christ. So, um, Paul cared enough to correct the Corinthians. Oopsie. <clears throat> so, let's start with chapter 5. So, what was the main problem with the Corinthians? What's the main theme of this book? So in Romans, we found out a lot uh, that it was the manual for Christian living. And so the are the Corinthians saved or not saved? Saved. They're saved. So now they need to have no what? They've justified, so they need to work on their what? Sanctification. 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 So their sanctification is their walk, their life, and their conduct. So now Paul uses an example of blatant wrong conduct, wrong living, um, to, you know, make a point. So, um, <clears throat> so they were position, positionally, they were saved and sanctified, but in the practical sense, they were not living right. So that was practical sanctification. So that's Romans 6 through 8 is what they need to know um, how to accomplish. Because it's once we're saved, that's great. We have the imputed righteousness of Christ placed to our account. But now God wants us to start learning how to grow and how to live in Christ and what our conduct should be, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, even when Paul explains the resurrection, which he's going to do in chapter 15, he's going to tie that into conduct. Because at the end of chapter 15, he's going to say this uh, sentence, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So he's going to try even the resurrection when we get to 15. Mm -hmm. all, you know, all of these chapters is about sanctification and our Christian conduct. And we need to know 
how to now live the Christian life. Um, so in chapter 5, Paul is going to give this example of blatant wrong living. And after we have studied this chapter, we will examine um, the two natures in the believer, our, our struggle. We'll, we'll go there towards the end. The end, we will look at the two natures that are at war within us. The, the sin nature and the uh, divine nature. And there's a, a book called The Two Natures in the Child of God by E.W. Bullinger. That's um, excellent and available on Amazon. And also, um, Pastor Rick Jordan did an excellent four-part study on this war in the believer. And I, you know, borrowed some of his material for what we're going to be talking about later. Um, we borrow in the in the body of Christ. We're constantly borrowing from each other. We're learning from each other. Okay, so um, um, okay, so the because the root problem on, in the fornicator was that he was feeding the wrong nature. Mm. Sin starts on in our you know inside of us mm -hmm. before it's revealed on the outside in our actions. Um, that we do with our physical body. So sin originates in our minds. Um, so the counsels of the heart or our thoughts and intents which God will judge. What should they be? So let's look at the goal. Because after all, when Paul began chapter 1, he mentioned the goal. So let's go first and see what Paul said. And then we'll see... Um, what our goal should be. So, in chapter 1 um, of 1 Corinthians, if you go to verse 10, um, Maureen, would you please read that for us? Paul one, has stated the goal. 110. 110. Thank you. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Okay, so notice he uses the word same three times. Mm -hmm. So the body of Christ should be perfectly joined together. And uh, we should be in the, uh, the same, uh, speak the same things. There should be no division. And we should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So, um, and that same mind is the mind of Christ that we receive from reading his word. And same judgment is the same, making the same decisions. We're, we're going to be making the, those decisions based on the word of God working effectively in us, right? So, um, the, uh, what should our uh, thoughts and intents be right now? They should be to glorify God um, and uh, exalt our Lord Jesus Christ and to edify the body of Christ. That is our goal in, in this study and it's our goal in our lives. To you know, glorify the, and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ and to edify the body of Christ. Mm. Um, that means build each other up. So we need to kill wrong thinking, which leads to wrong living at the root, so that we can be useful laborers to God. So um, in um, speaking about the church, when we use a capital C, that means the church, the body of Christ, the true church. And then when we use a lowercase c, then we're talking about the local assembly. So we're going to be speaking a lot about the local assembly today oh. at Corinth. Um, so in chapter um, 5 now, um, having dealt with the division in the church, Paul deals with gross immorality in the church. 
and the leader's refusal to deal with the offender. Paul gives two reasons why the offender should not be tolerated. Number one, for his own good. And number two, for the good of the church. Believers in the church should judge other believers' actions so they should put the wicked person out of the church. Okay, so let's start with verse 1. Patty, 1 Corinthians 5, 1, please. Let's get right into it. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Okay, so it was common knowledge that a man should have his own wife was going on. No, that a man should have his father's wife was going on, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that was not even, you know, that, uh, that was a sin not even practiced among the Gentiles. Uh, uh, the barbarians wouldn't even do that. So, common knowledge. it was common knowledge by those of Chloe's house that probably confirmed that with the three people that brought the letter to Paul. So Paul had talked to those of Chloe's household, and then he had also confirmed this common knowledge with the three who brought the letter to him in Ephesus, right? Um, so you remember those three, Fortunatus, and um, well, let's, let's look at verse 16, 17. 1 Corinthians 16, 17. Um, so, are uh, they false teachers? No, these are the three um, people who came from the church of Corinth mm -hmm. to, with a letter from the church at Corinth mm -hmm. asking a whole bunch of questions. About, and we're going to start answering those questions when we get to chapter 7. So in 17 it says, Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus. Those brought that letter. But they... They hadn't mentioned some of these things, like division, and they hadn't mentioned about the fornicator. Chloe had told Paul about those things. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, um, now he, Paul, it's, it's out there. Yeah, Paul mm -hmm. has also verified it with them. You know, is this mm -hmm. really true? Mm -hmm. um, and it was. So the sin was um, shopping, shocking sin. Um, to allow a church member to live in open sin hurts them as well as the reputation of the church. A man had relationships with his father's wife. The woman involved, the stepmother, was not a member of the church or Paul would have dealt with her too. Mm -hmm. Not only is this type of incense against what God says, let's look, see what God says in Leviticus 18.8. Um, would you please read that, Maureen? Leviticus 18, 8. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. 18.8. 18.8. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Okay. So, um, you know, the wife belongs to the husband. You should not, you know, mess with anybody's uh, wife, and especially not with your father's wife. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, God is very, very clear about that. So, when he saw her, um, he wanted her and so that's covetousness wanting something that belongs to somebody else mm -hmm. and then he he did extortion which is taking something that belongs to someone else and so sexual relations are not to be between a man and a woman sexual relationships are to be between a husband and wife mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. a lot of Christians even get this wrong okay mm -hmm. because the marriage bed is undefiled mm 
Let's, um, that's what it says in Hebrews 13, 4. So James describes how wrong thinking produces sinful action. And I'm just going to read that to you, but it's in uh, James 1, 14 and 15. So it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Because we are tempted. We are tempted, you know, now as believers sometimes. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when the lust hath conceived in his mind, sort of like, you know, given birth to that bad idea, it bringeth forth sin. So now he's going to sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So the end of that um, is uh, death. So, um, you know, we, we have the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are mentioned in 1 John 2.16. So, this wisdom, James says, in um, James 3.15, descendeth not from above, but is earthly, the physical body, sensual, the soul, and devilish, the spirit. Okay, we don't want to have these devilish ideas in our minds. Could you go back and um, it, it seemed important about every man tempted lust of the flesh. Oh yeah, so so um, so that was James one fourteen and fifteen, and then the uh, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the three things that uh, is a human downfall, mm -hmm. and they're mentioned in First John two sixteen. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so and then the last verse was from James three fifteen. Okay, so before we are saved, who is our father? Satan, right? Mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan was. And mm -hmm. at salvation, God rescues us from the darkness and not only saved us from um, those who trust Christ, but sealed us with the Holy Ghost, right? So, do um, you remember that it says in Colossians 1.13 that we're translated out of darkness? In, mm -hmm. You know, into um, Christ. Let's let's see what it says exactly. Colossians one thirteen. Colossians one thirteen. Why don't you read that, Patty? And then we're gonna also look in Ephesians two one through three. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us? into the kingdom of his dear son. So in, in Adam, we had darkness, mm -hmm. and our souls were dark. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is light, and so when we're translated into Christ, then we have light. And um, because, you know, he's the light of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... In, uh, I'll read these, Ephesians, but read along with me. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened. Is that past tense or present tense? Past. 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 You know, he hath done it. So, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We had trespassed, uh, you know, the laws of God. And done our sins. Where in time past, before we were saved, ye walked according to the course of the world. This world. So the course of this world is who is the, the god of this world? Satan. Right. According to the prince of the power of the air. So he's yeah. also the prince of the power of the air. The air. So we walked according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, mm -hmm. which is the course of this world, like you know, a big old river. Yeah. You know, where most, the broad way, which most people are on. Mm -hmm. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So that's the spirit, the, say, you know, the devilish spirit 
is working in the children of disobedience, those people who won't obey and believe God, you know, believe that what Christ has done. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. There it is. Mm -hmm. The lust of our flesh. We were, you know, living in the lust of our flesh, mm -hmm. fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we had, you know, the lust of our flesh, the desires there of the flesh and then we had of the mind also so you know we had dark minds and we did dark things it's like we couldn't help but sin and you can't expect a sinner you know a lost person not to sin right that's right i can't they, yeah they don't even know yeah they don't even know so then we know in ephesians 1 13 14 let's just look over there in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is, what's the gospel of our salvation? Christ died for our sins. And, and that he was buried. And, and that he rose again the third day. Perfect. To the scriptures. <laughs> perfect, Patty. That's our gospel of our salvation. Once mm -hmm. we trusted all that Christ had done for us and believed that with our heart, mm -hmm. then we were saved. Because, um, in whom also after, in whom being Christ, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. So, Satan, that devilish thought, that, that father was removed from us. And then, then what happened? We were sealed, see? Mm -hmm. We were sealed up, so he can't get in anymore. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So the purchased possession there is our entire whole selves. Our soul, as, uh, our spirit, and our body. Not necessarily in that order. But the whole, our whole enchilada, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of that is us. We have been purchased. Okay, but, you know, even though right now only our soul and our spirit are redeemed, at that time our body will be redeemed also. So, um, let's move on. God changes our thinking so that we can live right and serve Him. Paul is wonderful, is a wonderful example of a man with a regenerated spirit. Go to Titus 3.5. Titus 3, 5. Um, whose turn is it to read? Oh, mine. Okay, Maureen, why don't you read that? Having a form? Oh, hi. No, oh, Gracie, hi. Gracie, please go out. Mommy's taping, honey. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so we were, uh, Paul was regenerated when his um, spirit was made alive to God. Don't miss that. Okay, so we have a spirit, we have a mind that can think before we are saved. But it, it's, it's not any useful to God, and it doesn't know God, and um, it's not alive to God. So once uh, we are saved, we are regenerated spiritually. Our spirit is regenerated. Mm -hmm. And we're washed by, um, you know, in that we get Christ's um, righteousness placed to our account, and we're renewed by the Holy Ghost. So now let's look a little bit at our um, Paul. He was he went from being angry, exceedingly mad man who hauled away men and women to prison to wanting to save uh, the jailer who put 
his lashed body in stocks in the inner prison. Remember when the jailer was going to kill himself mm -hmm. in, in Philippi? And Paul said, don't do it, we're all here, you know? Yeah. I mean, that took a lot of love mm -hmm. to stop your jailer. So you can see how transformed Paul was. Mm -hmm. He was transformed. He was renewed. He was uh, regenerated. Mm -hmm. and, and just like we are mm -hmm. now that we believe. So the fornicator's sin was a total disgrace, even among the Gentiles. Can you remember someone else in prophecy? In prophecy, not in mystery, but in prophecy, that did that same sin that went up to his father's bed. Okay. For fornication? Um, I'll, I'll just tell you. Oh, it was okay. Jacob's first son, Reuben, oh. that did so. Therefore, Reuben did not receive the birthright of a double portion. Oh. Joseph, the firstborn of Rachel, received that blessing so that both Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, receive an inheritance or a portion in the land of Israel. And that is in Genesis 49, 3 through, 3 through 4. Let's go there. Uh, Patty, why don't you read that? Genesis 49, 3 and 4. So remember too, Joseph <clears throat> um, did not um, succumb to the fornication with Potiphar's wife. He, he, he fleed mm -hmm. from there. Okay, Patty 49, 3 and 4. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defile, defiledest uh, thou it. He went up to my couch. Okay, because he had... Sexual relations with Bilhah, oh. uh, father of uh, Jacob's um, concubine. Oh. So um, let's go on now. Um, verse 2, um, Maureen, 1 Corinthians 5 2. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Okay, so now Paul is saying that this the people in Corinth are puffed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they thought they were so open-minded mm -hmm. tolerating the fornicator. Hmm. Um, but instead they should be mourning that that person may be taken away from them because if he's doing this kind of gross sin, he may not be saved. Okay? And also, um, they may lose him out of the assembly because if he is saved, um, he's not fit to be a church member. So they won't be able to enjoy his company. So at this point... We don't know for sure, but we're going to find out later, later that he really was saved. Um, but um, at this point he said, you know, um, that you should be sad yeah. about this man's condition because we don't want our worst enemy to go to hell. And we don't want, um, you know, someone to be living in their flesh either. So when it says that he who has done this deed, mm -hmm. so it may just have occurred one time, or it may have, may have been an ongoing thing. We're not really sure. Might have been taking away from you. So let's go now to um, verse 3. Patty? For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that hath done so this deed. Has so done this deed. Mm -hmm. So Paul's already made up his mind about this action. Um, Maureen, verse 4. 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay. So, um, all right. So you read two verses. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah. um, so uh, let's go back to four. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit. So that spirit there is Paul's mind, which is found in the words that he's writing in this letter, which he says, you know, um, I've already judged, you know, you should remove him from your assembly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's going to use some strong language at the end of this, uh, you know, cast out that wicked one, you know, type of thing. With the power, okay, so with my spirit, so also there was prophecy going on in the early church. Mm -hmm. So they, were, the Lord Jesus Christ was um, causing the, the spirit to, to move mm -hmm. and prophecy to go on. So that was another, you know, thing that was going on in the Corinthian church. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So notice how he doesn't say soul. God does, I mean, Paul does not say so that his soul may be saved. He says so that his spirit may be saved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does all this mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. So Paul is talking about his spirit being saved. Okay, so this man's problem. Um, is his wrong thinking just like the Corinthians okay so let's go to um, Ephesians 4.23 Ephesians Okay, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we need to have a renewed mind. And, and this, uh, so this man needs to have a renewed mind. And see how the spirit is equated in this verse with the mind. So the, the spirit, our spirit is in our mind. It has to do with our memory, our, the things that we know in our mind. That's where our spirit is. So he, this guy was having wrong thinking, and so were the other Corinthians who were puffed up, remember? So to deliver him to Satan means to cut him off from church fellowship so that he must live in the world. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who's the god of this world? Satan. Satan, right? So... Um, let him go from the assembly so he can destroy his flesh with the pleasures of this world so that he can realize his need for a savior and fellowship. Okay? Give him lots of rope. You know? Mm -hmm. Let him... Let, if he, he wants to indulge sexual pleasures? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay? Yeah. He's out there. Yeah. Let him go. Yes. For the world is controlled by Satan, it says so in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It says, God of this world. And in Galatians 1, 4, it says, in this present evil world. Mm -hmm. And it's vain. Our world, uh, the world is vain. Okay? It's empty. There's no joy there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sensual sins and perversion will bite in the end just like intoxicating drink. So let's turn now to Proverbs 23, 13 through 15, and 26 through 35. So let's go to Proverbs 23. 23. Um, it's over there by Psalms, mm -hmm. just after. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to 23. Proverbs 23, 13 through 15. Patty, you want to read that? Sure. 
13. And then you can read the other in 23, Maureen. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. 15, all the way to 15. Oh, uh, thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Okay, so, you know, this man needs correction. It's the best thing to do for him, just like the Corinthians needed correction. Um, because it is not being a good parent to allow our children to continue in sinful behavior. Uh, and what's going on in their mind is affecting their spirit. Yes. And so the rod of correction is going to help them uh -huh. if you apply it to the seat of understanding. Okay? Uh -huh. That means give them a little spanking. Uh -huh. Right? Even though it's yeah. not cor politically <laughs> correct. Even right? though it's, yeah, well, we, we're not caring yeah. about what people think. Yeah. We care about what God thinks and what God says. And so we're going to do what He says. Mm -hmm. So let's go on now with uh, verses 26 through 35. Uh, Maureen? My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Okay, so let me just clarify that verse. So we want to have the heart of whoever we're correcting, whether it's our child or a friend or even a church member. We want, we want to do, you know, we don't want to destroy their, um, their, the, we want to tie the heartstrings. Uh -huh. You know, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're doing it with love, even if it's hard to correct them. Make sure that this person is saved and will be um, part of the rapture. But if he's saved, to bring him to repentance that he might be saved from the loss of reward at the day of judgment. Because we're all going to give an account for what we do in this world with our time. Wandering saints need to be warned for their own good. Paul says in his letter that there are in his letters, not just in this one, but in his other letters, that there are several types of believers that should not be in the church. Mm -hmm. Members who have a reputation for flagrant sin, like this uh, fornicator in 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 11, and those who cause divisions, and that's in Titus 3, 10, and 11, and those who perpetuate false doctrine with error, that's in Romans 16, 17, and 1 Timothy 1, 20, and those who refuse to work, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 12. Mature believers should lovingly seek to restore those who are suddenly overtaken in sin. Galatians 6, 1, says that. And Paul keeps his own vessel in control. Okay, so we're going to look at those verses real quick. Mm. So we already know about flagrant sin because we're dealing with that in this chapter. Mm -hmm. So let's go now to those who cause division in Titus 3, 10, and 11. Um, right. Patty, three. can you read that? Titus 3, three. 10, and 11. Yes. And the T letters. Okay. The last of the T letters. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, uh, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Okay. So a heretic is someone who, um, you know, won't believe the truth and also you know causes division so um, you're not going to he, he's sinning and so you're, he's going to be rejected so now let's turn to um, do, uh, those who perpetuate false doctrine that's in Romans 16 17 and 1st Timothy 1 20 so false doctrine this I'll, I'll read that in Romans 16, 17, because it's just 
to the left of 1 Corinthians. Um, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So, whoever is um, causing division and offenses contrary to the doctrine that Paul is teaching, we're going to avoid those people. And then, um, 1 Timothy 1.20, can you do that one, Maureen? 1 Timothy 1.20? Of whom is high... But he's going to be mentioning a few more sins. Uh, verse 11, um, can you read that, Maureen? But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one, know not to eat. Okay, so now they're not even going to eat with a someone who's called a brother. See how it says, mm -hmm. call the brother? Mm -hmm. So the, when he says, call the brother, someone that says, you know, someone can say, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they may not be a Christian mm -hmm. just because they're calling themselves a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they might think that they are even, but they may not be if they haven't made, you know, a, a heartfelt trust in what Christ has done for them and trusted in that alone for their salvation. So if this person is called a brother, he may be a brother or he may not be a brother. Uh, be a fornicator or... So now if someone who claims to be a Christian... Um, is a fornicator or covetous or an idolater. That means that they're, you know, idolizing mm -hmm. a, a, a God that's not the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there are many forms of gods today, mm -hmm. you know, like television, mm -hmm. you know, and um, other things. We're going to look at that later. Um, or a railer. Railer means someone that's reviling mm. or, you know, or um, accuser. Mm. Or a drunkard or an extortioner. Extortioner is someone that takes something that doesn't belong to them. With such a one, no, not even to eat. So Paul doesn't want them to associate with someone that's called a believer who's living wrong, in wrong living. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was verse 11. Let me see if I have anything more on that. Okay. Alright, so let's... Um, so they are not to associate with the person who calls himself a believer and blatantly sins. If he calls himself a believer, he may or may not be a believer. Only God knows the heart. How... Ever we find out in 2 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8 that this man uh, probably was a true believer and did repent and realized his error, but then that the leadership now in Corinth didn't want to let him back in. So let's take a look at that. 2 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8, and I'll read that. It says here, um, Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many, which was he had to move, go out of the assembly, so that contrary advice, you, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Mm. So he, he, w he had said he was really sorry for what he had done. He had re realized the error of his ways. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. That means, you know, let him back in. Mm -hmm. and tell him, you know, we're happy that you're back. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paul goes on later that, Less, in verse 11 it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Mm -hmm. But we'll cover that when we get to 2 Corinthians. It really has to do with how uh, Satan wants to divide and keep people from being together mm -hmm. in, in the body of Christ. 
So, um, okay. We expect the unsaved to sin, but even the world expects Christians to be different. The members of the church should not be like the world. One reason the church has so little influence in the world today is that the world has so much influence in many of the local churches. Paul also warned the Thessalonians to abstain from fornication. Let's uh, take a look at that. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 12. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 12. Um, I'll read that for time's sake. Okay. Um, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, Ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Okay. I'm going to go all the way to 12. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more and that in your love, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business, and the work of your own hands, as we commanded you, that ye walk honestly toward all them that are without, that means without Christ, or outside, you know, the, um, the body of Christ, and that ye may be, it may have lack of nothing. Okay, so, God wants all, I mean, Paul wants the best for them. And he says that we are supposed to take, have control over our vessels. So let's move on now in first back to First Corinthians five in verse twelve and thirteen are our last two um, verses. Um, Patty, can you please read twelve? Yes. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Okay. So now Paul is saying. For what have I to judge them that are without? Those that are without Christ is not Paul's business. Okay? He is interested in the churches. Those people that are the believers in the body of Christ. He's not going to judge those outside the churches. Outside the body of Christ. And then he says, Do not ye judge them that are within. So, you know, many... Um, Christians are very shocked to find out that we are to judge. Yes, we are. We are supposed to use our divine common sense that we have. To judge who? To, to judge other people that are in the body of Christ. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it shocks some believers when they hear they are supposed to judge. Okay. And so let's take, go back in and look at verse 215. But not their salvation? Not their salvation, just, just their, their action, behavior. Actions. So, First Corinthians two fifteen, Patty, can you please read that? Oh, First Corinthians two. Okay. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things; yet he himself is judged of no man. Okay, so we're really supposed to judge all things, you know. We're, we're supposed to be able to decide if something is good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, verse 13, Maureen, 513. 
But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Okay. So he, he says just what Patty mentioned a few minutes ago. That those that are without, those that are without Christ, without salvation, God is going to judge them. That's a great white throne judgment, right? So, um, therefore, Paul says now, put very straight out, put away from among you that wicked person. He calls a spade a spade. He calls that man, that fornicator, what he did was wicked, very wicked, right? Mm -hmm. It was evil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, they are to expel those who live in open sin and will not change their minds and decide to stop sinning. We have free will. Especially um, with um, a believer who has been freed from the power of sin, we should just decide not to do it. So they're supposed to um, expel that um, sinner who, who refuses to stop and, and sinning and, and live unto God. He's not doing that. Out of the local assembly. Church discipline must not be done hastily. But all parties involved must be permitted to state their case. Sometimes weaker brethren will accuse a strong King James Bible believer and right divider because they're ignorant of the facts and want to throw, you know, a King James Bible believing right divider out of their church. Sometimes that might be the best thing that ever happened to them because <laughs> then, you know, they, they uh, you know, will have to listen to church on uh, YouTube mm -hmm. or find an, uh, a right dividing assembly uh, that, you know, uses the King James Bible uh, themselves. So, you know, sometimes when someone is being questioned, they're questioning the good person. You sometimes know. the assemblies are attacking the good person. Uh -huh. So, you know, uh, that, that happens too. Yeah. So, on other occasions, it is Satan who tries to bring division among the believers. That was in 2 Corinthians 2.11. That was, I, I read that, we're not ignorant of his devices. Remember that? Uh -huh. So there must be prayer and the word of God must be consulted and there must be sincere love. You know, we're doing this out of love and in and, and, and sincerity and in truth, remember? Mm -hmm. So look at Galatians 6 1 now. Well we finally get to this verse. Galatians 6 1. Go eat popcorn. So, it's going to be right after Corinthians, it's Galatians. Okay. Um, Patty, you want to read that one? Okay. And, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Okay. So, um, we the the goal is to restore the sinner with meek, meekness, considering ourselves that we might be tempt, not be tempted also. Mm -hmm. So you you know someone that is spiritual, see ye that are spiritual. Mm -hmm. So it should really be mature believers that are trying to help someone that has fallen into sin. Um, in sinful behavior and that, you know, they know, you know, oops, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And so it's, um, it's a very sensitive situation that needs a lot of tact. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you have to be sure that, you know, you're, you have charity and love in your heart when you're doing it. Only God can judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. But we are to judge the believer's actions. Paul says that what the man did was wicked. Now Paul says, 
straight out that the fornicator should be put out of church. And when we are in the flesh, we are useless as laborers for God. This is what Satan wants. Our enemy is very sneaky. He has a lot of distractions out there. For to be carnally minded, it says in Romans 8, 6, is death. So, but the spirit, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, do you want death or life and peace? <laughs> life and peace. <laughs> life and peace, right. So we want life and peace. We don't want death. Because if we're in our flesh, if we are a believer, then acting like an unbeliever, we're useless to God. And so we want to have that life and peace. We want to have the life of Jesus Christ in us that produces peace. And we want to be useful to God. So when we are carnally minded, then we are thinking with the sin nature, the flesh, and not useful to God. And now we're going to go over the two natures of the believer. And um, I'm going to have this on God's Secret Facebook page. And so um, you can get that there. But um, we will um, take a look at this. Okay. Um, is that kind of coming in? Mm -hmm. It's hard to read? Okay, don't worry. I'm going to go over it. And even if the handwriting or the writing is very small, I'm going to make it clear. So oh, don't okay. worry about it, Patty, because oh, okay. this is going to be on God's Secret Facebook page. Oh, okay. And also, when I explain it, they'll get it. Oh, okay. Okay? okay? So this is carnal versus spiritual in the believer. In the believer. Okay. So, um, the mind is where the spirit is. We, we accomplished, you know, we concluded that today. Uh -huh. So, with this mind, we know some things. Okay? We know what God says with our mind. Uh -huh. But then in our heart, see the heart there? That's the soul. So, I wouldn't copy all this right oh, now. Okay. I would all just kind of try listen. to listen. Okay. Because otherwise you're not going to get it. Okay. Right. Okay. So, with um, our soul is in our heart. That, mm -hmm. That's the real you. That's mm -hmm. the real you. And that's where we, you know, believe some things. We mm -hmm. have faith from our soul. So, when we believe, if, you know, if we just have knowledge of the Word of God... It could be head knowledge. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is we want to get God that knowledge into our hearts. So when we believe with our soul what God has said, mm -hmm. then that word of God goes into our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We don't want just head knowledge. Mm -hmm. We want to believe what God says. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the mind is where the spirit is. So, the real you is the heart, the mind, will, and emotions. The affections and lusts is in the soul. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, that's, that's um, there. Then, what's the third part? Our body, right? Mm -hmm. Our physical body. body. So, our physical body um, is the vehicle that carries the mind and the soul, which are invisible. Mm -hmm. Okay? This, and that's the inner man is made up of the mind and the soul. So, um, we have in the soul, this is so important that you guys get this. Take a look up here. In the soul, mm -hmm. you have two natures. And they are in the soul. You have the sin nature and the divine nature. Mm -hmm. So, the sin nature is also called the flesh, and the divine nature is also called the spirit. The sin nature is also called the old man, and the divine nature is called the new man. The sin nature is also called the natural man, while the divine nature is called the spiritual man. The, 
old creature and the new creature. The outward man and the inner man. Oh. Or the, yeah. It's, so um, the outward man is really more like the physical body, but mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it is, um, it is also not the inner man mm -hmm. that houses the soul and the spirit. Okay, so we have this war that goes on in there. So when we believe what Christ has done, then um, our spirit has connection with God's spirit. Mm -hmm. Our spirit is joined with God's spirit. Mm -hmm. And we're made spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. and, and so then our soul um, you know, has believed what God said. And that's how we're saved. Um, so, in the be believer, there's a war between the sin nature and the divine nature. Because in our physical bodies that haven't been redeemed, mm -hmm. and they're mortal, it, the sin nature, even though it was crucified upon salvation, it's still housed in the body. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why we haven't gotten rid of the sin nature. So um, these two natures are at war. And Paul says in Galatians 5.16, and I'm going to read you the verse, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we're going to walk in the Spirit of the divine nation, nature so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. So the sin nature is of lusting against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And, and the spirit is, less, you know, is against the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. These are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Galatians 5.17 But if ye be led by the spirit, this, this divine nature, ye are not under the law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to, you know, feed the divine nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we feed the divine nature? Read the word. Read the word. Read the word. Read the word. And believe so, it. And believe it. Yeah. You have to believe it too. Yeah. So um, that is not just head knowledge. So this is worldly wisdom of men. We can say here that this over here, worldly wisdom of men, mm -hmm. is that wasting time or redeeming time? Wasting. Wasting time. Wasting time. Okay, God's wisdom is different from the worldly wisdom of men, right? Mm -hmm. So is God's wisdom, is that wasting time or redeeming time? Is God's no. wisdom redeeming no. or wasting? Redeeming. Redeeming, okay? So let's look at some of these and compare. Just, just mm -hmm. look, guys. And I'll give you, I'll print it out for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Philosophy or the Bible? Which one? Bible. Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Psychology or Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul? Which one? Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul. Right. Politics um, and talk radio or Christ exalted? Christ exalted. Christ exalted, right? And not self-exalted or men exalted, right? right. TV. Dr. Phil, The View, and Oprah, or um, the Corinthians had the Thessalonian letters and Galatians to read, right? They had yeah. God's Word. Uh -huh. They had those letters they could read. Yeah. Paul, um, they had Paul's writings. They could know his spirit and his mind mm -hmm. through, you know, that was really the mind of Christ. So, diet gurus... Or imitate Paul as our pattern. Paul. Imitate Paul. Imitate Paul, right? As our pattern. Video games or feed on God's word, especially Romans to Philemon. Feed on God's word. 
Perfect. Romans to Philemon. Okay, so here's the self-exalted. Okay, and there was Christ exalted. Okay, so, and then here, if we have the the mind of Christ, um, is so important, and so the, the way to get it is by doing Colossians three ten. Re let's read Colossians three ten, everybody. Um, Patty, can you look that up? Sure. And let's let's follow along, Maureen. Okay. And put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, so we're going to put on the new man, which is the divine nature, which is created uh, in the knowledge of him that created him. Okay, which is, you know, of course, Christ. So with, um, the, you know, over here, with worldly wisdom, we have garbage in, and what do we get if we gar have garbage in? Garbage out. Garbage out. Mm. So if we have the mind of Christ in, what do we have coming out? Life and peace. Mind and, yeah, life and peace, uh -huh. mind of Christ mind out. Of Christ. Okay? Uh -huh. So that that's what we want. Yeah. We, we don't want to do the... Okay, so then once we have this divine nature operating in us, uh -huh. then we practice what we believe. And that's in 1 Corinthians 6.13b. Maureen, can you please read that? 1 Corinthians 6.13b. This is how we're now going to, you know, once we have the inner man doing the right thing, we are going to use, you know, it, then our spirit and our soul is going to make the body do some actions. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Body is for the Lord. Is that the? Is that the? Okay. Uh -huh. So, so our bodies are not for fornication, but it's for the Lord. So we have to make that decision to live for the Lord, and we just have to say, nope, stop. I'm not going to go there. You know, if I'm attracted to uh, another human being. Yeah. Or uh, something else that's going to take precedence, you know, like, you know, watching a TV show when I could be reading the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, why should God let you into heaven if you care nothing for his word or knowing him? Are you grateful for what Christ has done? Do you believe Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose again? Are you saved? So, you know, I mean... If someone claims to be a Christian, but they care nothing for God's word, wouldn't you sort of be suspecting that maybe they weren't really saved? There, and I'm not saying that you have to read God's word in order to be saved. I mean, you, while well, you use God's word, you can be saved and not read the Bible. Okay. But if someone has cares nothing about knowing God and His living Word, you know, you would start to wonder if they really are saved. And also, that person is cutting himself or herself off mm -hmm. from the power of Christ mm -hmm. renewing their mind and helping them to in their sanctification process. Mm -hmm. They're know? anemic. They're anemic. Yeah, they're starving themselves. They're mm -hmm. doing, you know, they're cutting themselves from their uh, off uh -huh. from the source of power. Yeah. So, you know, they may be saved, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that there there are some oh, yeah. that are, you know, believers that don't read the Bible. But you know, why chance it? You know, because yeah. faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you don't want to take a risk like that. Yeah. Right. You want don't want to. I'm sure uh, there are many out there, though. Yeah, there there are, are many out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they just uh, they uh, and there there are many out there that may be saved, but they may be in false doctrine, or they they may not be reading the Bible. Uh, yeah. So they you know they're not healthy. they're not healthy. They're anemic, like mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. 
So the nature that governs, governs the believer is the nature that we feed the most. So remember that if we're, you know, carnally minded, let's read that one more time in um, Romans 8, 6. Marine, can you read that? Romans 8, 6. And what was that saying? The nature that governs the believer? Is the, the nature that governs the believer is the one we feed most. Oh. So if you sit in front of the oh. TV, you know, all day long, and you don't care at all about reading God's Word, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be carnally minded. Yeah. And you're not going to be used, that's, you know, you're not going to be useful to God. Yeah. You're not going to be useful to Him, mm -hmm. so you might, you, you're basically dead as far as being useful to God. Yeah. You might be saved and yeah. um, you know, get in as if by fire at the judgment seat, but you're you're you know, when you have to give an account for yourself mm -hmm. and what you've done on this earth, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have much to show mm -hmm. at the judgment seat. Yeah. Go ahead and read six. Romans eight, six, and we'll six. finish with this verse. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. So to be in our flesh, to be allowing the sin nature to take over in, instead of the divine nature, mm -hmm. is we're, we're dead to the things that God wants for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's choosing not to be His workmanship created mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus for good works. Mm -hmm. Saying, you know, I, I don't want to do any good works for you, Lord. So we have to redeem the time. We have to make sure we feed the divine nature and that we are not wasting our time here on earth. But we're spending it um, on, on valuable things for the Lord. Okay, let's close. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you and we thank you so much for this Bible study. We thank you that um, you've made it so clear mm -hmm. that we should, um, you know, feed the divine nature, mm -hmm. your word, so that we can um, spend our time wisely here on earth. And I, I pray that you help us to have more light, more spiritual enlightenment more uh, understanding and so that we can be more useful to you what a privilege it is to be yeah. your sons yeah. to to be useful sons to God in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen.